All right, everybody. Sounds like you're thinking about getting a Sunset Swing 422 SB. You wanna see how easy it is to actually put it together? That's my job. So what we're gonna do here at Ultimate Comfort Swings is go through a quick video, show you all the different steps, kind of get, take care of some of the uh, shortcomings that might make it more difficult for you if you're just going off the regular instructions. Uh, I do go off the instructions pretty close, but I'm gonna explain it a little bit differently, which usually helps people get through this a lot faster. So um, something to think about uh, is to watch the video in its entirety before you try to put the swing together. Uh, it really will help you out and you can always back up to uh, the part that you need. Other than that, we'd like to say thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions on anything you've seen, always go to our website, give us a call direct at the 855-763-8882 number, or you can send us an email, text, you name it. We're always there for your questions to help you through the process after purchase. Well, let's get to work. Welcome to Ultimate Comfort Swings. We're gonna be showing you how to set up your 422 SB swing today from Sunset Swings. We uh, wanted to go over some of the tools that you're gonna need. This is one of the more extensive swings, so I always suggest on this one that you have a partner in crime. Today, I'm gonna do it on my own just to, say, to show you that it can be done. But let me show you some of the tools that we're gonna be utilizing today. I always recommend an impactor drill. Um, a lot of the bolts, it makes it easy, quicker. Um, some of the bolts though, I am gonna show you a couple steps that you do not wanna use that uh, impactor. You're gonna to wanna to do that by hand. Um, you'll see here that I've got my hand tools here. They're all metric. The numbers go from 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, and then two tens. I'll explain that why. But those are all your uh, metric wrenches, as well as a four, five, and uh, I'm sorry, a four, five, and six uh, Allen wrench um, adapter for your drill. You got the same uh, Allen wrench sizes that are actually included in your kit, an extension bit for your uh, for your sockets which are the same sizes that we have here. So the 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 millimeter socket wrenches. Uh, you also have your blade, which you've used to actually already open up all the boxes, and then also to start all the bolts. So I always cut a little L on there, so it makes it easy to grab each step. And there are uh, a total of 18 steps in this swing. So they're all set in. Really be careful, don't interchange them. Go one at a time uh, in sequence. So uh, we're getting ready to get started here on this. We've got the right tools. Now we gotta do the job and uh, let's get started. Guys, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with, guess what? Step number one. So go to your, uh, your, your boards here and we will see right here, step one, you have four bolts. And step one is going to be actually putting in the feet to the, uh, the foot bar. So I wanted to show and have some fun today. You'll notice I have one, two, and three ready to go. You would not believe how many people call us on the phone, email us, they forgot a part, they forgot a piece. I've been working with Sunset Swings now for almost 11 years, and I will tell you this, they've only sent the wrong parts to me once. So what you need to do is make sure that you go through the packaging, because if you look at this, it looks like it's just done. Guess what, inside this plastic, you'll see that the leg was actually inside. So just make sure before you throw away any of the plastic or any of the wrappings, because we do wrap them well, that you actually make sure you have all the pieces of parts. All right, so let's go to step one. Um, pretty simple. So we actually have our brace bar. Don't confuse these with the up for the uprights for the seats. They have a very strong uh, 90 degree angle, kind of smaller on the back, bigger on the front. What we want to do is go ahead and take that foot, stick it in front, just like so. So there's also too a little note. It's got a little hole here. If you can see that. If you're on a synthetic deck or a really slick surface, sometimes it's nice to actually bolt these down, uh, especially down in Southern Florida or, any, or when you're on a dock um, where you might have any chances of uh, high, high tide or high, uh, high um, waves. Um, you might wanna think about bolting that down so that way the swing won't move. Remember, it's almost 400 pounds, so it's not gonna move by itself, but uh, those are there for you if needed, okay? So let's just go ahead and put that first bolt through. Notice that I'm putting the uh, bolt from the front to the back. 
Now this bolt's gonna be important, especially if you uh, need to, if you decide to go with one of the winter covers by Ultimate Comfort Swings. Uh, that's actually what's gonna end up holding up or holding the skirt on for your uh, cover. So that comes in pretty handy. So you wanna make sure you have that on the back. If it's on the front, it won't work right. So you just put on the 17 millimeter wrench. Pretty simple. You got four of these to put together. Let me get this finished up and we'll move on to the next step. All right, placement is everything. So as I'm going through, you'll notice I have things kind of where I want them. If you can watch this video and kind of see how it's done, you'll notice I don't have to move a whole lot. Everything's within an arm reach. It really makes setup easy. Also too, I have them on a nice carpet here. Uh, looks like grass. You can put them on blankets, moving blankets. Always put your parts on something soft so it doesn't get scratched, okay? So that's finished with step one. We're moving to step two. Let's go ahead and take that off the peel. You got these longer bolts. Now this is a little trickier when you're by yourself. This is where an extra hand comes in handy. But if you're doing this as a surprise for your wife or maybe for your husband or get the idea or your significant other, I guess I should say, what we wanna do is uh, show you how to do this. So the way I do it is I grab the upright here. I already have this up so I can rest this on my body, right? So that way it's upright. Take the bolts, stick the bolts through with the, the bottom of the nuts off already. As I take one hand, I can actually adjust as I'm holding, sets that in, and make sure that since we're doing the left side, it actually is marked L for left. So now that goes through. Another little mistake if you're not watching the instructions, people actually put the bolts right through. We actually have a compression bracket or a U bracket that goes up underneath that adds extra support. So that way there's less chance of the upright actually shifting. So hold that in and uh, you can hold with your shoulder here if you don't have the hand strength. So see I lean into the pipe, go like so. Once you get both of those in, I'll show you a little trick Take the bar now, it's loose. I'm not tightening this yet, there's a reason. Take the legs and spread it out. Take it out to the side. You want a little bit of length there so that way it's not in your way, but it's easy to grab, okay? Let's go to step three. Guess what? It's exactly the same thing that we just did, just on the other side. So you do wanna make sure that you have the right upright on the right leg. If you switch them, the swing's not gonna sit right, and it's, it's not gonna look right, it's not gonna swing right. So you do need to make sure that that's set correctly. So, uh, same difference, bring this in. Got both bolts ready. Got my U-bolt, U-bracket. Bring this over. I set it down, set my belts, my bolts in first. Slide it in. Those bolts do go at an angle, guys. A lot of people try to put them straight down. They are going at an angle, following the same angle as the pipe. So something to keep in mind. That's why it made it, I just made it look so easy. But uh, as we set this in, we're going, 
One more. Once again, we're not going to make this tight yet. We're just doing it hand tightened. That's it. And let's go ahead and extend this one out as well. You're on the nylon. So now you can see I have both pipes or both upright legs sitting in front of me. Easy to work on. So step four. This is the top of the frame. So I want to make sure I have two ready to go in my back pocket and then two more in my hand ready to bolt in. So I'm going to undo these, one washer on each side. I have my top bracket right here. This is the swing bar. Actually has the bearings in them. You do want to make sure that you have the right side with the sticker facing forward. Cosmetically, you'll see that the sticker is here. You want that facing forward. It does make it easier so that way you're not uh, looking at things differently on the, on the instructions. So I set this like so at a 45. That way the weight, this is a very heavy bar. So it's actually a very heavy bar. So as I take this, now I can take my bolts and put those through. Now the reason why I'm going through the top is a little bit different. The instructions always state to take the, the bolts and put them away. But most of our customers are purchasing our winter cover. If the bolts go up, then they have a chance of actually rubbing on the canvas. They can actually wear it out faster. So we want the bolts to go down this time. Grab your leg, bring that in. And now you don't even have to do anything. It just sets right there. Most people will sit there and try to hold the leg up and this up. It makes it very difficult. It's very heavy. Um, this makes it super, super simple for you. Um, you only have to do two bolts here to actually make it hold. If you get a phone call, whatever, good bathroom break. Kind of shift that over. Starting all four in this case. And last one, not tightening anything yet. We want to keep everything loose, just in case we're not on a level ground. We'll get everything set right. Okay, let's grab step number five. Guess what? Same thing, just opposite side. So as I'm here, a little bit more tricky, obviously, but I put my bolts down inside just two. You don't want to overdo it, else you can't hold them in place. You don't want to lose your bolts and your washers in the grass either, guys. So make sure you're trying to do this on a, on a nice surface. If you're not on a deck area where you're going to drop them down, you really want to keep in touch with that and know where all your bolts and washers are at one time. So now I've got one hand up here. Other hand can grab the other leg. As I bring this back into the other side, kind of get it even, line it up doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be able to make it inside. You saw, makes it a little bit easier here to manage, and you don't have to look like Superman to make sure that you get it done. All right, we're gonna just finish off these four bolts. Once I get this done, now it's gonna be a good opportunity to come back, set the swing in its final resting place, and then we're going to go back and tighten all these bolts up. So get those last two in and we'll be back in one second. All right, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and get these uh, little white pieces. These are always here to protect the uh, powder coating, you know, in shipping. I try to leave stuff on for as long as possible to make sure that we're protecting everything, but they're kind of getting in our way. So we'll get rid of those now. Um, let's go ahead and go back to our tools. We're going to switch this out just for a second. 17, keep that handy because we're going to need it in a couple of minutes. But we're going to go to a 16. So the 16 is uh, there for you. And then also to your Allen wrench. Now, if you've ever watched the installation video that I have online about the 421L, I'm going to show you the same trick. Take your number 10 long, put that over the top. So now that way it kind of holds the tool you don't get the vibration of the Allen wrench. It kind of gives you your own little handle. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the bottom ones first. Now I've kind of got the legs 
eyeballed to where they're actually at a 90 degree angle, okay? You do have a little bit of play, and that's fine, but we just wanna make sure that they're relatively, you know, at a 90 degree up, up and down. You don't wanna to pigeon toe too much either in or out. You wanna stand up and set. So once those are good, 16 again on, on the bottom. Those are finished. All right, so we put the, set, the 16 back. Now we need a 19 with the extension. Put that on. And then we need an 18. Now, you can also do an 18, 19, 19, 18. For the bolts, there's one 18, one 19. Doesn't matter really which way you do it. I do it this way. Open in, wrench. Up over the top. I always go opposite directions on these. So kind of crisscross like you would a tire. So up over the top. Makes it super easy. Make sure you're set. Last one. Okay. Because this is the last set. Maneuver the leg to where it almost is already a circle. That way it's all set and level. There's no chance of the legs moving on you. Uh, it's just gonna make things a lot easier. Here. All right, and there you go. Notice all four feet are flat on the ground. For some reason, if you didn't go in that order or shift correctly, once in a while, one foot can be up, kind of like the horse, okay? What you need to do is loosen everything up. Don't undo it, just loosen it up. Start from the bottom, work your way up to the top. Makes it a lot easier, okay? All right, so next part is the swing arms. Let's go ahead and get started with those. So, it has step seven here. We kind of skipped from five to seven. If I didn't have a canopy today, and let's say if I needed extra sun, I could go ahead and put the canopy on first here, which is step six. I'm gonna skip that today just because we wanna make sure that you can see what else is going on. So we'll do that toward the end and make that one of our last steps. Wanna have good visibility so you guys don't miss anything. So just remember I am uh, changing up the, the sequence with you just a little bit. All right, so we've got all these in your back pocket or a tool belt or whatever you got. All you need is one, one bolt. Now, this can be pretty tricky, but if you watch my technique, it's really really simple grab the swing bar about a foot and a half back with one hand then take the actual pillar up here at your your uh, ball bearing system and put it back at a 45 that way now you could slide it in and if you watch what i'm doing you could actually move your leg look down here at my leg i can actually move my leg and line up the bolt right through the hole. So instead of sitting there trying to use all muscle, right, maneuvering the pole, going up and down, side to side, it just gets very tiring. Um, with this, if you kind of use your, your body instead of your muscle, it does make it a lot, lot easier. So I know there's a lot of people out there going, how the heck did he do that? So if you've ever messed with this, you could have two people trying to hold this and you're both fighting against each other. Once again, see how I'm using my leg, going from the front back in, makes it so much easier, okay? Now, the next step um, here with these, you have two options. The instructions tell you to go from the outside in. Okay, I'm gonna go from the out, inside out. 
And the reason being this is a floor model here at the show. Let's say that you are the type of person that wants to winterize your swing and you like really want to take this thing apart every season. I'm not telling you to do that. You don't need to. The reason being is there's actually a company out there that makes a really nice winter cover to cover this up so you don't have to take it in every year. But um, if you are one to choose that wants to take your swing apart or you want to take it up to the campsite uh, for the season, for the summer, um, this is the part where you're going to actually take it apart here. So if you have them on the outside, you could use your drill where if you have the bolts on the inside, like the instructions, it's going to make it harder where you have to have, actually have to use a hand wrench. I hope that's a good little tip for those people that uh, ever want to move their swing for whatever reason. All right, we're going to just do the same exact thing again. About a foot, foot and a half back, pull that the swing arm back just at a 45. Use your leg to adjust it in right. Set here, one bolt. And as you can see, pretty simple. We're already through the fourth one. The majority of the weight of the swing is almost done. So the rest of everything else, once we get this finished, is all just really the seat, which uh, makes it pretty easy. So sets through. And once you hold that bolt through, no, it, it does hold the weight. So it's not gonna slide out on you. You don't have to sit there and worry about that. Once again, in this particular situation, I'm gonna go, since it's a floor model, here at the State Fair, we're gonna put those bolts out. But in an in-home situation, these would usually go on the inside. It makes it look a little bit cleaner lines. And the instructions will tell you how to do that as well. It's up to you. Just a happy little bolt. That was my interpretation of Ross. I remember watching that guy on Saturday. This is crazy. Saturday morning. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to tighten these up. No, we're not. Not yet. Don't go too set. This is one of the steps where you don't want to use these yet. You want to actually go to the next step, which is going to be put the chassis in. It makes things a lot easier. You start to tighten these up too soon, then it's going to be harder to get the other stuff in. So let's keep it loose. I'm going to go ahead and come forward. So let's go ahead and put the seat chassis in. We'll be right back. Guys, now that you got the seat chassis ready to go, this is in the front. One little thing I'd like to show. There are two different ways to do this. The plastic sleeve sticks over the frame. If you put it the backward side, it's flat and flush. So you do want the part that sticks out to be in the front. So it's facing this way, okay? Now, let's go ahead and put that down for one second. Go to our step eight. Let's grab all those bolts out. Once again, it's important, try to keep the bolts in place so you only grab them as you need them. You know, I don't know how many people here have ever tried putting things together and the bolts come in that big, huge bag, kind of like a Lego set, right? That's actually kind of fun. But this makes it so much easier for you to find your way through the steps and it makes it a lot easier. Now notice what I just did. I put all four bolts in at one time. So now, instead of trying to do one at a time, I could take my leverage, put one in, one there. Once those set all the way through the bottom of that pole, it's solid. So now I could reach over to the other side and slide it in. If you try to do this one at a time, once again, you're using extra strength to hold the weight up. You're trying to adjust. It's that easy. Um, so that's, those are the things that you don't get in the instruction manual, why it's important to watch the video so it'll save you time and headache. That's probably 20 minutes fighting those bolts just by the way that you hold it and you're all set. So let's go ahead and make sure these don't pop out. Um, once we get this in, we're going to do the other side the same exact way so you get to practice one more time. Just hand tighten. Let me grab the other one. Come up over the top. Bolts are ready. Once again, plastic sheath is facing forward. 
all four bolts, unbolt them, washers off, preset. Now watch this set one more time. All the bolts are all the way through, hold it from the middle, line up, Once those are through, now it's solid. You can come back up on the other side, set that down, and flush them out. And there you go. We're going to hand tighten these. And what we'll do is we need the 17 again millimeter. Now that we've got these all in place, we can go ahead and come back to the last step, tighten the ones up top and tighten these down here. We're all done and we can move on to the next step, which is adding the fabric. So, 19 is probably still on your gun. Let's go back to your 17. Doesn't matter what order. You know, another thing to point out in the video, since we're here, if you do want to winterize the uh, chair, a lot of times you can actually take these bolts off and just take the chair in along with the table once we get that in. So leave the whole chassis outside, but you could just take this part out as the chairs together. So that's another way that you can winterize it. People do that. Let's go up to the top. Now, I'm going to use the gun but I know how to push the button. Guys, do not over tighten these bolts. Once again, if you ever move, you wanna take your swing, you're gonna to wanna to take this bar out. If you over tighten on this one, you can bend this pipe and cause it to actually flex into each other. You're not gonna be able to get the pipe out or worse yet, the chair back in. So when you do this, make sure you only go right to the pipe. Really quick burst, not long. If you don't trust yourself, then guess what? Use a hand tool. You know, just again, just enough to be flush with the metal. You don't want to go too far over, all right? And now you see why you want to be able to get in. Makes it a lot quicker. All right, so this is all done. Let's go ahead and move on to the fabric. Here is actually one of the hardest parts about putting together a 422 SB. So watch very carefully how I do this. If you'll notice, I have the seat fabric in the same exact position that it came out of the box. I don't unwrap it, keep it together just like it is. Because here you have both bolts together, it has the cardboard in between, it makes it really easy to grab with one hand, okay? So let's keep that to the side. We're gonna go to step nine. I'm going to get four bolts out at a time here. So I wanna pull four of those. Um, with this particular step, it has special washers. So step nine, don't forget about those big washers at the bottom. So you need four of those as well. So let's get all the bolts ready. You wanna be able to grab these because this is kind of awkward uh, for one person to do. What I do is I take two of the bolts, okay? I stick them through and prep them first. So they're actually already there, ready to go. Notice I'm going on the side that already has the hole showing. There's no reason to switch it out. You'll know that because you have the rubber bottom for the seat, that's actually the edge. So that's the bottom. The top has a flat plastic piece. So that's gonna go on the back. So I'm gonna hold it like so here. Hold these two bolts with these two fingers so they're straight. I'm gonna slide over. As you can see, it's already kind of shifted on me. So I didn't have a good grip. Shift it here so I have it with one hand. Hold those two bolts. Line up the holes. So it's still together, holding these in. Once you've got it mostly in, grab the bar from underneath, 
holding that so now you can see that it's all the way through okay so now I can fold this up so that way it doesn't get in your way got a little bit of room it's kind of a little bit of a balancing act grab your big washer that we took out if I knock it over hold on on camera take your big washer and your nut feel from underneath up underneath here it's kind of hard to see without the camera Let's see, I'm kind of coming up underneath here, and we're only gonna do one turn. One turn, you don't wanna tighten this too much. Okay, come back forward. Now the back one's in, it's not gonna go anywhere. Come back over this way. Same difference. Now you got the washer. Once again, one turn, that's it. Now you don't wanna turn anymore. The more that you screw this in, the more taut it's gonna be when you go to put these bolts in. Let's see how it's already, it doesn't even look like it's gonna, those bolts aren't even gonna stretch, right? So this is where it gets a little taunting, okay? So once those two are in, slide that, that other bracket all the way to the back side of those bolts because we left them just loose. Grab your hand from up underneath here line up and now i can pull and all we're trying to do is just get far enough holding your thumb and the fabric see i pushing this way and pulling this way on the fabric at the same time keeping this hand available to put the next bolt on up underneath now same difference pull that back out bolt through hand holding that bolt with your palm pulling on your fingers the, the fabric back giving it just enough get that in there just enough to get that bolt so now perfect that was awesome so now it's nice and loose but you'll see it's already taut here so now it's gonna be nice and set now very important before you go any further right here if this fabric for some reason an installation let's see if i could make it do it and now i can't work to be pulled out i'm trying to make it wrong but it's actually right but if this was pulled up at all this would be a good time to actually there we go so if this was pulled up at all you can't at this point you cannot let it sit that way you have to bring it all the way down to the bottom here at this seam so make sure that that's flush right so it's not sticking up you want everything here all the fabric to be nice and pulled back because after you get past this point once you start bolting this all up it's going to cinch you're not going to be able to move it so you want to make sure the beads and everything's set right at this point so make sure the fabric is set and put exactly where it needs to be all right let's go ahead and move on to the other seat I've got it folded up here nice and tight again, grabbing it like so. Um, actually, what I do, unbolt these first. That way we're prepped and ready. So those are already in. Grab the fingers underneath, holding it with your thumbs so you have good control. Come over the top. Start the hole. Kind of let it find its way through there we go now fingers here just trying to hold everything together there won't matter bolt but that's okay one out of two ain't bad okay once again we're not going just 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 barely on you don't only want to do one turn if that turns at this point it's not a big deal it just makes it look a little bit cleaner and that sets it. So now that's done. So now we can turn over. That's ready to ready to move. Unbolt these. Put that one in. Put that one in. Make sure your washers are ready. Okay. So you see here how it's nice and tight. So I'm going to start the first one up front. Try to get it as level as possible, because remember the bolt goes straight through. Good. 
and get that other bolt out of the way. Now, you see up here, it's just barely sticking through. Just so gonna get just enough. There you go, just a little turn. You got the set. Now the back one. It does make this a little easier if I had somebody else holding the back. But once again, I wanted to show off and show that you can do this on your own. I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Frank because he is the master of this. As I drop my bolt and washer. See, even pros do it, guys. There we go. Now I got a better grip with my palm. Like I was saying earlier, the bolt's through. And it sets in. All right, good time to check the fabric. Everything's in right. Everything looks good. All right, perfect. We can move on to the next step, which is gonna be step 10. All right, guys, uh, this is pretty simple. It's just a matter of a step one, two, three. What we're doing is step 10. This is the arms. So what's great about the arms are they are actually marked. They got a red R or a black L, okay? So I kind of do these and set them up like so. So you've got the bolt, the, the, the metal washer, the nut, a plastic sleeve washer, and also too, this is where the metal spring goes. So when it's all said and done, this is what it's gonna look like, as you can see here. So we're just gonna actually copy that same set that we see here, right here. So look for the sleeve. So I always look for the wood sleeve right here where it's cut out. You wanna put the bolt through the opposite side. So start it here through the wood. Take your spring, just line that up like so. So the spring goes through, push that all the way through like so. Then you've got your metal, or I'm sorry, your uh, nylon, uh, this is your nylon washer. All right, so that's there. Guess what, we're done already. How easy was that? Look for the sleeve again, so we know we come from this side. Spring through, push it through. Sometimes you have to give it a good push, guys. Sometimes the threads catch on the wood, just knock it through, it's okay. Um, or you can even screw it through. Wash her in. So these, we're not quite there yet. We're gonna grab this. Let's go ahead and show you how to put it on the chair. All right, so what you're gonna do is turn this over. So we know this is the left. So the left is gonna be the left side of the chair when you're sitting in it. So let's go ahead and take this and come over on the side. The middle hole that you see there just goes right through. All right, set that off to the side. Be careful of the wood. You don't want it to be moving around and shifting. Because if you do, oh, lost my washer. See, see why you don't want to do this on the grass, guys, without a blanket? If you haven't cut your grass for a couple of weeks, you might not find that washer again. So make sure you're putting blankets or something down on the ground to where you can find the bolts. Now, let's go, once that's just hand tight, take the other side of the spring just rest it right inside that sleeve then up underneath here on the other side see this bar this bar slides right inside that groove so just slides right over the top in between the two all right so we can do that again so now we've got our right R for the right side make sure you grab your washer and your nut stick it through the other side again same thing all the way through, washer first, bolt, come over on this side over here, connect that in, that sleeve goes right in between, just like so. All right, we can go ahead and go to the other side. Same exact thing on the other side, we'll start with the right side this time. Make sure you got your washer and your nut goes through washer nut push that back a little bit in the sleeve slide it in next step last arm through the middle bolt right. the seat is one that everything if you'll notice we're not tightening anything yet we don't want to put any extra stress on the fabric until we're ready. So that's in. So we're all set. Okay, so let's move on to step 11. 
I want to show these actually in the packet. Okay. Step 11 is important. See these little washers? Those are lock washers. Okay. You don't want to lose these. I have lost probably three or four of these in my career in the last 11 years. All right. So I'm very careful when I'm taking these out of the package. They're small and they're important. And the reason being is this part of the swing is the only thing that you really have to keep an eye on over the coming months. So people say, well, what kind of, what kind of maintenance do I have on my swing, Curtis? It's really none um, for the most part. A little bit on the wood. We'll go over that in the wood section. But uh, right now what I want to do is show you the tensioning bolt or the retention bolt. And what I do is I put these washers on immediately so that way I know where they're at. I'm ready for battle and I keep them right here on top so I can come back to them, okay? Now, I'm gonna grab your little Allen wrench. That's the number six, right? So that fits right in. I go long side first, so I'm prepping it, already gotten it ready. So I've got it inside, my fingers are in, I got my finger over the washer. Let's go into the chair and show you how this works. Now, you remember that little sleeve I pointed out earlier in the wood? That's a notch. And what that notch is for is for you to be able to put the bolt through. So you line it up and it goes in through, all the way through that bracket into the other side. Now. This is only going to be hand taught. You do not, all you want to do is take your fingertips and tighten it to the point where you really don't want to tighten it anymore. So it's just, just, just where it stops. You can come back and tighten it later if you need to, but what you don't want to do is bind those two pieces of metal together. If you sandwich these two pieces right here and that bolt, sandwiches those onto this metal bracket on the inside, this sleeve will not move. So you want to keep it not too loose, like right now it is too loose, but you want to keep it in an area that it's going to be still very flexible for, the, for this middle bar to slide gently through that sleeve. Okay, so let's go back to the other side. We got three more to do. Line this up. Doing exactly what I told you not to do. There we go. Hold that with your finger. Once you get it in, you're pretty well set. Make sure you're catching the other side. There you go. You want to go all the way through. If it's, if it's really super loose, what will happen is, is the wood will catch that bolt. And it'll start to shred the inside of the, the wood. So you want to make sure that like I said, it's not too loose, it's not too tight. It's right, just perfect, just perfect. Let's go ahead and go back over. I'll go on the side now. And the sleeve. Once again, you can kind of see up underneath. It's going, make sure you're catching in there. There you go. And you'll see it, I'm just tightening it in, getting it flush with the other bar. And then once I get to that point, I can tighten it just a little bit, just a little bit. We don't want these both to squish it. You just want enough to have a little bit of wiggle in there so it'll still slide. Save you a lot of time at the end while you're wondering why your swing is not moving and adjusting forward and back. Remember, the 422 SP has a lot of nice adjustments. It's a perfect swing for you to be able to sit back and enjoy a cup of coffee, read the paper, your iPad, just sit and talk with the kids, grandma, your neighbor, you name it. It's a very relaxing swing um, because you could sit up or my favorite, you get tired after a long day of work, lay back and take a nap. <laughs> Not today though, we still got two more swings to build. All right. Let's go ahead and start with this. We're done. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next step. See you in a couple of minutes. All right, guys, almost there. We're on the third sheet. Let's get through this. Number 12, step 12. Let's go ahead and take a peek at what we're grabbing. Now these look a little bit unique. They're a little bit different than most of the other bolts. Uh, if you have our 421L, then you've seen this before. 
What this is is a compression bracket. Uh, this helps out a lot when you're trying to compress the fabric or stretch the fabric. Um, the fabric that we use is actually called a sling. So uh, put those off to the side ready for over there. But what this does is it kind of helps keep everything in place. What I'm going to do is take, whoops, take that and stick that through the existing hole right there. You see that there? And that's going back up to, uh, to the chair. So stand up. Notice I am behind the chair now. Definitely something you want to do. I rest this side on the fabric there so I don't have to worry about holding this as much. So now I can keep my finger in, line up. You got a nice big hole there so you can usually line it up pretty nicely. This is one of those bolts, guys, that you need to keep loose. Don't screw it all the way in yet. Make sure that you keep it kind of loose because you need as much stretching as possible. So this is gonna come back through again. You know, we haven't tightened any of the bolts for the chair yet. And why, the reason why we've done that is because we wanna keep everything nice and easy to maneuver. So now that I've got that in, I could tighten that up a little bit. Now I could tighten this up a little bit. That's gonna help me get the next step, which is actually step 13. So this just keeps everything straight. It's just a longer, smaller bolt. Remember I told you you needed two tens. That's what that's for. So see, I've got it just there, barely there. So now I gotta push it just enough like that with my finger, a little bit of a pressure. Some people do use a uh, clamp to do this. If you do this a few times, you got good muscle strength in your hands, you'll be able to squeeze it. Last one is usually a little bit more difficult because this is gonna be the strongest, you know, the strongest one. Can I see how it's almost there? Let's see if I can do it with my hand. I always use my palm on the back side, fingers there. Now also too to cheat, you could do the other bolt because that's already in, right? So if you want to hand tighten that, now let's see it sticking out. Now I don't have to try to wrestle it as much. Kind of holds it where it goes. And see, I didn't even need any clamps. Some people do use a clamp on this side, but I find it kind of bulky, um, but that's all set there. So let's go ahead and take your tens. I suggest using the two uh, um, ratchet ends on these, right, like so. It makes it super easy. Uh, these bolts are small enough to where you don't really wanna use the compactor. So just kinda get these tight. Start with the back, the back bolt, other side. If you have two ratchets, oh my goodness, it's so much easier. I used to do this with a crescent wrench. Having the right tools do help. Now obviously, set that back in. And now this one, you can almost tighten all the way through. Um, the head of this right here actually does fit a 14 uh, millimeter. It's the only reason why you'd have a 14 uh, is this set but it's not necessary um, as much as you think. So make sure I'm going the right way. Or righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? But it does nice, to, so that way it's not spinning on you. I'm gonna get it nice and tight. But these are the bolts I told you about that we don't wanna use the compression because they're so small. Um, you could you know, definitely rip, or uh, especially with a compactor, you can break the bolt head right off. And then uh, we gotta do a whole bunch of stuff to send you new parts and everything else. So the smaller bolts, you know, use the hand tools. Does take a little bit longer, but well worth it. And as you can see, it's getting the fabric nice and tight. All right, so that's all set. Those are nice and tight. Now, just need to repeat the same thing over on the other side, same exact steps. Usually get these ready first.
it goes too far down then you're not able to line it up just kind of hold it once again don't go too far make sure you don't cross thread either guys that's always the worst nightmare especially if you're using power tools everything in this set should be able to go in with your fingertips you shouldn't ever have to force anything other than the seat fabric underneath, but that's still with your hands, not with the power tools yet. So once that's in, get that closer so it's easier to do the other bolts. Go back to step 13 again. I always go from the outside in. Any of your open nuts, if you can, try to hide them. They're not as finished, they don't look as pretty. We want that done. Yep. If we were in grass, guys, I would have lost that forever. Twice. So always make sure you have that blanket if you're working in the grass. Just enough to catch the bolt. Okay, all set. Grab your tens again. Since that one's Pretty simple. Back to that 14, once it starts to spin. It's nice and tight. where that ratchet wrench really does come in handy. Okay. Now, since we're back here, let's go and do one last thing. Remember back with the arms? It's a good time since you're already down in this position to tighten this up. I already brought the 13 uh, with me. You also need the medium Allen wrench, which is the number five. So go to the outside bolt that we went here and the number 13. Okay, now, if the camera, you could focus in right there in the middle. Notice I'm only gonna go until you barely see any light. So you don't wanna over tighten this bolt. You wanna have it just where it meets 
so that way it still has wiggle room. You do not want to tighten that all the way, just to where it's just kind of, I don't even want to say snug, it just, where it just barely touches the nylon, because that's what the nylon washer is there for, is to move back and forth. So you want to have good movement there, a little bit of wiggle room. I've got it here. So let's go ahead and do the rest of these. Remember there's four, four arms all together. And once again, you might need to come back and adjust some of these. But this is definitely when you don't want to use the uh, power wrench on because you just want to keep it just to where you still have a little bit of movement in there. Okay, so since we got the top bracket tightened, we've got the back arms tightened. Now we can actually go up underneath the chair. So let's go ahead and tighten up the fabric from the seat back in our original step. And that will bring us full circle. And the chair is almost done, guys. So 17 up underneath. You want to take a peek. So right here. Now watch the fabric as I go in. That really finishes everything off. So now I'm gonna go to the back bolt over there. Same difference, switch hands. Hey, did you like that? That was pretty cool. You wanna see that again? Hold on, switch. Hey, I, I'm a pro. So when you come back, you're able to go and actually switch that in. I know I was showing off a little bit. Now you can come back to the one up front. And one more switch just for giggles. Make sure the last bolt is squared in. For some reason, it always gets caught. And now we're set. So everything's nice and tight. Everything's in. Technically, I should be able to sit in this chair now and adjust. So, and once again, so it is a little tight. So I went a little too tight on the left arm. It should be pretty easy to go. That spring's in there. Okay, it's moving a little bit. It takes a little bit for it to move too. I just want to kind of show the concept of this. So the springs are working well, everything's set, we're pretty tight. All right, so this, this seat's done, let's tighten this one up, and then we can move on to the footrest. You ready? All right guys, on to step 14, we're actually gonna put the wood rest that goes up over the top, okay? So I start from the back, because this is where most of our work goes, so we're gonna go ahead and take uh, step 14, take the small washer, but keep the large washer on, that's to protect the wood. So it kind of gives you a bigger uh, area, surface area when you put those through. Once those are in, what I do is I just take two fingers right here, my pinky and my index finger, thumb over the top, and that way I can come right over the top, slide that in like so. Okay, so that way the two bolts are facing out, and that'll actually stay. Set these uh, the washers and the nuts down for a second, and then here's another cool little secret. Here's your headrest. So what I do is I take the headrest, pull that out all the way and also too I bend this all the way forward okay this gives me something to hang on to if you try to do it like this well, the way that it actually ships you're gonna have a really hard time grabbing on and fisting over so if you pull this out pull this forward now you have something to grab in over the top okay so now I take it forward like so you've got the hole and hole I can actually take the same two in my point your finger and my, and my pinky finger up underneath, hold the bolt, and you see how that folds right in? And now I'm holding it with both fingers, put the washer in, hold it the best that you can, make sure your bolt's on. It's a small one, so you gotta kinda pay attention to what's going on there. Get it started, come back over here, hold the back of that bolt, now you're set, boom. I know I just made that look really easy but that's just lots of years of experience. Once again, it's all about placement of the hand. Guys, if you do it that way, I'm telling you, it's gonna be super easy. Um, with this one, 
because it's got that bigger washer on the wood, I'm not as worried about it. So grab your Allen wrench. It is the number um, six again. Once again, you got that opening. See how now I can sheet, I could go on the inside. Take your number 10 on your here. And let's go ahead and just nice and easy. Notice how I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just going nice and easy here. Another thing I want to do is make sure to line up, see where the wood is here and where the wood is here. So I've already tightened one. I want to just go ahead and bring that down a little bit and even that out. So that way I could tell that it's going to be nice and straight when you're looking at it from the front end. So now that you've got that where you want it, put your Allen wrench through the front of the bolt and see how I'm just, I'm just kind of just a little bit at a time. Remember these impactors are very strong. You don't want to um, do it too tight, you know, too quick. Um, if I had my 17 in my hand, which is over there, I'm going to grab it real quick. I want to show you another step that I can uh, do as I just lost my thing, but I'll put that there. All right, so take your 17. Let's go back over the back. It's a way to save time, but this is made very loose. Okay, go ahead and take your 17 on the end. Bring it down about a one and a quarter turn because you want to be able to move it, but you want it to be kind of taut because you don't want your head to rest on it and push it back if you're forward. Okay, so that bolt right here, that's something that you could tighten up or loosen up whatever your needs are, depending on how, how, much, uh, how much pressure you need on your pillow. So that portion's done. Let's see if we could do it again real quick. So the last two on step 14, keep the big washer on, little, little bolt little, or a little nut and little washer off. Set those right inside. Make sure I got my pillow ready. What are we gonna do? Pull it out, push it all the way forward. Now you're prepped, you're ready to go. Pointer finger and pinky finger. Up over the top, push those in. Now I've got this, pillow forward, up underneath, line her up, thumb in. Is this funny? Placement, guys, is everything counterbalanced by having the pillow forward. It's not as heavy because some of the weight's pushed forward. It just works so much easier that way. And now we're gonna come back again, finish this one off. You got your Allen wrench. You, and guys, if you don't trust yourself with the um, power tool, of course you could do this with the Allen wrench and a little 10, uh, number 10 socket or a number 10. And also too, I got lucky there, I didn't check, but guess what? It's lined up, so we did good. Um, while we're here, last check on this, a little, just a little bit, just a little bit more. Right about there, that's good. It's nice tautness, you'll, you'll figure it out. This is one of those adjustments that you might have to adjust every once in a while um, throughout the life of the swing. So that's something to think about there. All right, so we're, almost, we're all done on the back. Let's move back to the forward and work on the uh, foot rest. Sounds good? All right, guys, here we go. We're almost done. Let's go ahead and grab the foot rest. And what I'm gonna do is, this is upside down. So I just have the foot pad, the, the hole, the holes facing up sets here. We're on step 15. Can you believe it? We're almost out. I went ahead and put my number four Allen wrench uh, attachment. Once again, guys, you can use the regular Allen wrench that they gave you. Once again, don't go too crazy on this. If you're using your, your impactor, just a little bit. Doesn't need to be too tight, but also too tight enough. All right. Once that's done, take this, slide that right through, and that goes all the way in. Next step, got the other one. Line this up, Allen Allen wrench through. Go ahead and turn that back over and flop that in. All right, next step. 
All right, guys, um, just the little cap. This is just to hold the footrest so it doesn't go too far out. Just a little black rubber piece that goes up over the top of the back of the um, bar that we just put together on the footrest. That bolt goes through the other side and you just got one little nut, no washer. So what I'll do is I'll take my little tin socket with my small Allen, make sure we're going the right direction there. Give it a couple of spins. You don't have to go too tight on this, just enough to be snug. You don't really need to go crazy on that. Um, makes it super easy. But if you go too tight, that uh, bolt can go right through the rubber. So you just want to, you know, just get it to where it's snug against it. It'll hold it on. Allen wrench on one side to hold it in. Okay, see there? Just a little bit more. One more turn. Just enough to be where you can see it kind of pushes in just a little bit, but you don't want to pop through. All right, that's done. So now next is the tables. All right, guys, we are so close. Uh, these are actually your table brackets. And so the way this works is you want to see how that goes over the top to be flat, okay? So to line this up, I would do the side that you're doing, grab the bracket, keep it in the same angle, and now you have a choice. You can have the table far away, or after a long day of putting together four swings, I suggest putting the table closer because you know what I'm going to be drinking later. All right, so let's go ahead and put this on. We need the last step here, which is 18. I go backwards on this. This is one of those steps that I'm telling you to go kind of like what we did with six. We haven't put the canopy on yet. And you don't have to follow that direction, but the thing is, is I wanted to make sure that you saw everything. And if the canopy's on, it's a little harder for us to walk around with the camera. So we're all set. So 18 um, bolts are in. Once again, we're gonna have the table closer in this direction. So I'm gonna hold my, my pinky finger and my index finger up over the top, flip this over. Now I know I'm in the right position. Otherwise, if they're not uniform, your wife will yell at you. I mean, she doesn't yell. She just suggests that I did it improperly. 13 millimeter. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna cheat and do the Allen wrench. Once again, with wood, fabric, you don't wanna to go too tight. So I'm holding on the back. Just little bursts of power. Don't let it go full power and hold it down. Um, if you're using a regular drill, then you have the setting. So just where it's taut. Okay, so since I'm already here, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the 17s out, okay? And I'm gonna slide that through here, just like so, so we don't have to move. Do it all in one swoop. Line this up, and remember, this is one of those bolts that goes at an angle. Otherwise, if you're trying to go straight down, it's going with the same angle as the angle of the pipe. You can sit there and argue with it forever if you don't go that direction. Hopefully the camera can get it. What I'll do now is I'll just line this up, eyeball it, right? So that way it's level. My hand's over the bar so I can hold it nice and flat. Got my 17 now on. Nice and tight so that way we don't lose our drink. Let's do it one more time. We're so close. All right guys, so we're gonna take that bracket, make sure we have it the right direction. We want the holes closer so now we know where we need to go, right? So we're all lined up. Go ahead and take our last two bolts that we have over here. And once again, you got two washers. The small one goes on the bottom. The big one goes on the top. You should line that up. Here, let's set that down for, for a second. I'm trying to juggle. Fingers upside down. Make sure we're in the right spot again. So there we go. So I've got it there with my thumb, one washer, one bolt, one washer. That forward one nut doesn't give you a whole lot of room to work with. 13 millimeter again. Okay, so use your 13 millimeter. Hold that over the top. Switch out the number five Allen wrench. 
attachment. Once again, you could do this with an out hand out wrench. You don't need a power tool to do it. Obviously, it just makes it a little bit faster. All right. And last, second to last bolt here. Back to step 17, I believe. Yep. And slide the bolt through the bottom of the bracket. So it's hanging. Once again, you'll notice it has to come at an angle. Be surprised how long. Switch back to the 17. Line it up. Make sure you're paying attention to the top table that it's nice and level. And there you go. All right, last step. We're going all the way back to step six in this, in this case. You already got your 17 on board. So let's go ahead and grab the bracket that's right over here on the ground. Start from the front. Oops. And in this case, guys, I'm putting the bolt down. In the instructions, it tells you to put the bolt up. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because if you ever wanted to purchase the uh, if you ever wanted to purchase the cover, the winter cover, um, this bolt up here could rub that cover and you know cause holes and problems. So you're not going to go this way like in the instructions. You want to go down here so that way you have a nice even tilt of all the bolts, nothing's going to catch or rub. And if you noticed, I moved this handle back to get up out of the way, so that way we can get that tightened up. All right, let's grab the 17, last two bolts, one and two, nice and tight, all set in, everything's working great. All right, let's go ahead and put the top on. Time for a nap. All right, gang, uh, we do have the new white rods. If you do have the black rods, that's what we've had for over a decade. So something to think about there. Um, just uh, if you do order any new rods for any reason, uh, just know that you will be getting white ones from now on for at least for a little bit. So uh, if you're only ordering one or two, you might wanna think about ordering four so they all match. I do like these rods a lot better, so something to think about um, when you're bringing your swing out of winter time and you're looking to do something different. All right, grab your top. I don't know if you watched any of the other videos, but I do have a video on how to do this as well by itself. But you want to make sure that the fabric is set down, okay? So the hole is down. I'm going with the length of the swing, seven foot this way, so I'm doing the width. Um, if you wanted to go the seven foot back, you could look at the 421 there to show that, but we're gonna do it this way. I'm gonna step back again, kind of eyeball it up. I'm gonna go right over the top of my head. And that way, now you'll see why I catch it. So I'm there to catch it if I throw it too far, which is fine. All right, so stop back here. To that one first pull it all the way through into the nipple so that way it's nice and tight all the way through go in one singular direction doesn't matter which way but one at a time to where you get to the last one and you probably all seen the video already but we don't do what we don't go down right that's how we break rods so what we want to do is keep this here. If you're not six foot, guess what you do, guys? Bring it down. So you can move the fabric down so that way you could actually, anybody could do this. Grab the fabric, tackle it down, follow the rod, and put it right back on, and you're all set. So there is your 422, uh, 422SB, sorry. You see here, sit in, lift up slide back five different positions 
foot comes out, headrests adjusts either up or down. So you got a lot of a lot of different uh, adjustments. Canopy, five different settings for the sun. Just a great swing. Be able to sit out here, read a book, drink your tea, whatever it is that you like to do, guys. It might have taken us an hour and 25 minutes to do this, but it's well, well worth it. Now, guys, I'm a little tired, so I'm going to go ahead and lay down and take a little nap. I'll come back and see you in about 10 minutes.